The return of the Italian auto brand Fiat to the United States in 2010 was supposed to bring a touch of Italian flair to the U.S. car buyer in an affordable package. But less than a decade later, it is looking like a failure. The sad story of Fiat in the U.S. is one of bad timing and the wrong product. And it leaves open the question of whether this plucky little hatchback and the rest of the Fiat lineup even have a future in America. Fiat is a distinctly Italian car name, founded in Turin, Italy in 1899. Its small hatchbacks and roadsters are well known in Fiat's home country, in other parts of Europe, and in places around the world. Fiat's history in the United States dates back to the first years of the 20th century. In the early 1900s, Fiat even built cars at a factory in Poughkeepsie, New York. Yet, Fiat pulled out of the U.S. entirely in 1983, amid poor sales and a reputation for unreliability. But it remained a popular and influential brand in Italy. One of its most iconic models is the Fiat 500. It is perhaps the classic Italian city car, designed to bring affordable beauty to the European masses in the wake of World War II. Its fans praise it for being fun to drive, cheap to fuel, and easy to park. So Fiat's a really interesting company because it's sort of like that partner or spouse that you really need to give up and you just don't want to because they're just so sexy. <laughs> but it's just not very good for you. So, you know, FIAT is, there's a, there's a lot of acronyms about it. None of them are positive. But at the end of the day, you want to love this brand because it just evokes such passion in people. The Museum of Modern Art in New York called it an unpretentious masterpiece when it added a FIAT 500F series to its collection in 2017. But 27 years after leaving, Fiat decided to re-enter the U.S. market once again, emboldened by a merger with the then-bankrupt U.S. carmaker Chrysler. The U.S. automotive industry at that time was struggling and gas prices were rising. It seemed the perfect opportunity to bring Fiat's small, affordable vehicles back to the U.S. Coming out of the recession, fuel prices were high, uh, so there was a bet that if fuel prices stayed that way and Americans wanted small, fuel-efficient vehicles, there probably is a place for a premium offering, much like many who had been in market you know, nearly for a decade at that point, um, to, to, to suit Americans that you, know, you want a small car, but you still don't want to give up some of the, the, the nice features of, of a slightly more premium experience. So I, I don't think it was a terrible bet uh, bringing Fiat to the United States when they did. The Italian car maker brought a small lineup of hatchbacks and roadsters to the country with splashy advertising campaigns, complete with Super Bowl commercials, supermodels, and Hollywood actors. One commercial in particular featured Fiat's small 500 cars diving into the ocean off the Italian coast and emerging on the shores of the United States. But now Fiat is in real trouble in the US for reasons both within and out of its control. First, it turned out that as the economy recovered, Americans didn't buy a lot of small cars, or really even many cars at all. Instead, Americans scooped up sport utility vehicles, pickup trucks, and a fast emerging category of vehicles known as crossovers, a sort of hybrid of traditional passenger cars and SUVs. At the time that Fiat launched, the market, the new car market, was about 55% car and 45% SUV, pickup truck, that kind of crossover vehicle. Today, we are actually at 30% car. 30% car. Honestly, I've been in this industry for 20 years. I never thought that we would get this low in car demand. And even though Fiat's come out with things like the Fiat 500L, which is a longer, larger vehicle, it doesn't matter. We are selling medium and large crossovers. We're selling subcompact crossovers. We're just selling crossovers, pickup trucks. Fiat's U.S. sales peaked in 2014 at about 46,000 units and have plummeted in the years since to less than half of that. 
In 2018, Fiat sold just 15,521 cars. Compare that with Europe, where data show sales of Fiat's cars have mostly grown from 2012 to 2018. You have Fiat joining this market in the United States market, which is heavily going to trucks and large vehicles and these vehicles that are very versatile and whatnot, and away from cars in general, let alone city cars. So while these small city cars might make a lot of sense in Europe where you have really tight streets and parking is an issue, they don't make sense at all in the United States when there's, you know, parking that could accommodate, you know, large pickup trucks and, and three row SUVs. It didn't help that some of Fiat's reviews and ratings in the United States were less than stellar. Fiat earned low scores in J.D. Power's dependability survey and in tests and surveys conducted by Consumer Reports. Both groups are closely watched by the industry and consumers. You know, Fiat has had a reputation a long time ago of really quality issues, reliability issues. But we looked at these cars with an open mind. Um, you know, certainly the Fiat of today isn't necessarily the Fiat of 20 years ago. Um, but very quickly, our members were telling us about the reliability problems that they were having with this, these new Fiats, and it was not good. Um, there's a whole rash of different problems that we're seeing with all of the Fiats uh, that we had data on. Of course, Fiat's parent company, Fiat Chrysler, is not exactly struggling relative to its competitors in other areas of its business. Its Jeep and Ram truck brands have been remarkably well positioned for the SUV and pickup craze. In the same years Fiat has struggled, Jeep and Ram have thrived. Out of all the brands sold by the big Detroit automakers Ford, GM, and FCA, only Jeep and Ram are gaining share in the U.S. market. Furthermore, in 2018, FCA sold four times as many Jeeps in Europe as it sold Fiat's and Italian Alfa Romeo's in the U.S. Jeep and Ram are doing so well that sales of those brands are growing enough to offset FCA's declining sales in passenger cars. In fact, data suggests that all of Fiat Chrysler's market share growth in Europe from 2012 to 2018 has come from importing Jeeps onto the continent. Now, it's important to keep in mind that FCA never expected Fiat to be a dominant brand in the U.S., but even at its peak in 2014, it still fell short of the company's initial goal of selling 50,000 Fiats in America in a year. In recent years, the company has tried to adapt Fiat to the growing crossover trend by selling variants of the 500 that offer more space and capability. The 500L is a larger version of the 500, which some compare to a wagon or minivan. The 500X is meant to be more of a crossover type vehicle. It shares a platform with the Jeep Renegade, which, of course, outsells it many times over. In 2018, Jeep sold 97,062 Renegades in the United States, whereas Fiat sold only 5,223 500Xs. So the question is, what does Fiat's future in the U.S. look like? FCA has repeatedly said it will not give up on the brand in the U.S., but industry watchers say it will be difficult to justify a presence here unless something changes. Asked for comment, Fiat told CNBC that its results in quality surveys have been skewed by a limited number of models and sample sizes. As far as the brand's sales go, Fiat pointed to the recent launch of the 500X crossover, which is in the fast-growing compact crossover SUV segment. You know, I think the, the outlook's limited. I think the possibility of, of Fiat potentially uh, pulling out of the U.S. is there. Um, you know, whether we see that or not, it's not in the plans right now, but I think that's a, certainly a possibility. Overall, small cars have a tough time in the U.S. market. For example, Mercedes-Benz parent Daimler ended North American sales of its small, smart cars. If Fiat does not find some way to reach the U.S. customer, the Italian brand may have to swim back across the Atlantic once more.